ending session coming up, but we have two other sessions going on at the same time. So if you could, if you would like to check out what those are, head over to the agenda tab at the top of your screen and you can check that out. Uh, we're also running some polls throughout the day, um, as we've mentioned. Uh, so we have one coming up right now under the polls tab. That's just asking about your experience in data center KI. So the one that's up asks, what approaches do you currently use to label training data? We'll release the results of these polls at the end. Um, so please take a chance uh, or take a moment to vote and we appreciate it. And then just as a reminder, uh, if you are having technical issues and it seems like people have been communicating that, uh, first try refreshing your screen. That seems to fix a lot of the issues, but if it still doesn't, then head over to the help desk. That is also at the top of your screen. Uh, right above where you see the sessions going on, um, and the team will be on standby to help out. Uh, also, please feel free to just put in the chat. Um, we have a lot of snorkelers there to help out. Amazing. And with that, I am excited for our next talk. Uh, we have a fireside chat with a research scientist at Snorkel AI, Ravi Teja Mulapudi, and his guest, product owner at Ford, Madhu Lokanath. Hello, Ravi. Hey. Hopefully, Madhu Welcome. will be joining us. Oh, there he is. Uh, welcome, and thank you so much for being here with us. Hey. So, yeah, Madhu, uh, thanks for being here. And uh, as Aarti has said, Madhu has been uh, uh, leading uh, the Metapix product at Ford, uh, where they have been focusing, doing some cool stuff on like uh, data-centric AI and we probably uh, will touch a little bit on that and uh, get Madhu's perspective on like what that what the experience in building uh, that has been. So yeah, just to uh, start off, like Madhu, uh, if you can uh, tell a little bit about like what what it is uh, that you uh, that you folks are doing, and then we can start off. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you, Ravi, and thank you, Arthi, for the intro. So first of all, uh, I'm I'm really excited to be sharing this platform with the industry leaders in the space talking um, on, on data centric AI. And uh, we, we also are doing our part in, in this play, in the space. Uh, we have named it uh, Metapix and then and I'm really excited to share uh, basically the learnings um, uh, and the challenges to, to be able to put, uh, you know, uh, or, or build a platform like this. So, so happy to be here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. So maybe, just to get, get the conversation started, before we even talk about Metapix, let's say, what, what are the challenges at Ford that you're seeing today and what motivated you to kind of uh, move in this direction and uh, what are the broad challenges that uh, your team is trying to tackle? Um, so so pre we, are, we are talking about um, data-centric AI where we're, we are focusing on building the quality data sets that can be useful for uh, ultimately building the uh, better models or AI, right? And uh, in that context, um, how how can you reduce cost? How can you, you know, you're, you're spending a lot of cost to get a training data set. I'm talking in context of uh, computer vision because that's our domain, right? That's where Metapix focus on. In that, let's say you need to uh, come up with annotated data. How much money are you shelling? So the cost is a major factor, time. How much time does it take for a raw data to be converted into, a, you know, a, a training data sets and the quality, right? Uh, how good is your training data, right? So if I have to category in like top three challenges, these are the top three uh, things uh, I, I would say. Yeah. So good that you touched on it in the sense that uh, Metapixel's focus is on computer vision and uh, NLP, natural language processing and computer vision uh, look a bit different. So if you have any thoughts on like how that differences uh, come up and what kind of uh, what kind of perspective you have coming from like a computer vision perspective as opposed to a natural language uh, perspective. So, yeah. Um, I mean, prior to this, I was part of, you know, uh, helping build a, a ML ops platform within uh, Ford uh, with, with that context. And I, for your work, what I'll say is if you're looking at uh, a 10,000 feet height, right? So most of them look same, like you see a pattern there. As you keep going, like you will see, okay, what's the difficulties there? Uh, I I I would not say it's easy, uh, NLP, but uh, in relative, right, relative to computer vision, probably a a, a level less. Uh, 
and then now uh, you're increasing you're tuning a little bit of complexity higher on on computer vision so that that's my personal opinion uh, and uh, that's where i am facing to see if we, if we can through metapics solve this problem so would you say the <clears throat> complexity comes from the fact that the volume of data is just just higher compared to text and in general text is more understandable by humans and annotation is is inherently more easier and stuff like let's say annotating lidar points or something is is something that doesn't naturally come to a human okay a relative yeah it, it's a huge topic like we can probably spend a lot of time on just this uh, but an example is like let's say you're talking about a text right and you also you, there is a clear definition between okay there's this one word i need to extract or probably the context of it that could be a little um uh, not not very clear in in picture what are the pixels that that are you know you are, you are interested where do you draw the box according to whom do you think you know this is the right box we are, i'm talking in perspective annotation so uh, and teaching that to to uh, ai i think is is little complicated um, so so if you take any examples uh, the first thing they see is they'll they'll try to work on nlp Uh, and then they'll okay now now that we have confidence that it works on nlp now let's switch to c so far that's the approach nice yeah so maybe i'll just let you present uh, uh, just give us an overview of like what metapix does so that we can uh, we can have more context while uh, uh, talking about it yeah yeah so um, i i just named a data for ai and ai for data it's just another way of saying model centric and data centric ai so with that uh, um i my prior experience was was helping like build this data for ai platform and we called it macronimal um and we were focusing on you know building a great uh, model training uh, algorithms to to uh, spit out good good ai models at the on the other end and then what we saw is this for computer vision um there's lot of data processing what was done in silos by each individual use cases uh, because there was a gap they couldn't directly come to this platform to train the model they had to prepare their data uh, and annotation was was uh, a, ma- a major piece of this right and there are many other um, uh, uh, categories in in this data pre processing um, so we had to take care of that too so uh, now we are we are creating a data centric ai platform so when you're creating a platform it's not just you are addressing one use case and you are trying to solve that through data centric you are creating a platform for for many of those use cases which can come here and and use this framework how do you even see you know create a platform uh, for, for, to address those those different use cases right so that's the uh, uh, that's the inspiration so to address that what we did is uh, we thought you know the data pre processing uh that's that's where ai for data comes in so we are we are bringing in ai to help us you know uh increase the quality in data and we call it extractors so if i uh, go uh, you know one level deeper within extractors there's data annotation augmentation enrichment uh, anonymization it goes on the list goes on so now uh, we are talking about uh, breadth uh, sorry uh, horizontally vertically also or if you want to go in deep with each topic like for example annotation there are many th- many uh, sorts of annotation services right so it could be crowdsource or a dedicated workforce or you know, programmatic labeling or, or be it uh, uh, auto labeling so there are like quite some areas which each team or each use cases is probably comfortable with and you have to probably answer them on on your or, or you know cater them to to all the use cases through your platform so that's a huge uh, uh, undertake so that's extract this and next thing is our focus is on golden data so how how good is this data and uh, some of the attributes some of the uh, features around golden data like how easy it is to search search is a, a major ask and then the management of unstructured data is the main major ask versioning lineage governance all of this follows uh, behind them and the last product uh, under metapix platform was ai pipelines now the request is how do we automate most of it right we understand okay we are we are spending time we have an algorithm how do i uh, uh get to this part like how do i uh, uh build a pipeline that's where uh, uh we have extra uh, we have ai pipelines which is stitching end to end uh all 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 of this together and now when when we want an ai it's not just from left to right it's it's like a cycle you have to iterate through through this loop uh for n many times to be able to get this model and also use some of this model to get the good data 
right so it's uh it's 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 yeah. an iteration um well well that's mostly my topics yeah cool thanks madhu so that probably orients the discussion a bit uh, uh a bit more grounded so the key, immediate question i have is like so you mentioned that there are like a range of use cases at ford can uh-huh. you just give us a sample of like what the spectrum looks like uh, oh, it's... <laughs> yeah yeah i just pictured like what is the spectrum so it's like it's, it's huge uh it, it, it's it's rather than just a two dimension i would say it's like three dimension because in each of those categories you find oh, many varieties of use cases uh on top of my head like i am seeing manufacturing beat or adas or general computer vision uh like these are like the major three categories uh, at least for now uh, and then there are many other departments right and you you can use nowadays ai to to sort of uh, help or or come up with a service that will that will definitely help and computer vision is now taking off in that space uh, nice. so those are all uh, the use cases so i would imagine what you do for um, looking at manufacturing defects versus what you do to process lidar points would look quite different quite different yeah it, it's it's definitely different but you you can see some uh generalizing there is a bit of overlap which can be used so that that's where we are learning um so yeah yeah so that brings me to the next question is like so since you're building this platform which uh, you're trying to uh, get all these people on board so and given that they're so disparted there are going to there are bound to be challenges on like how deep we go into the workflow or like how do we uh basically go abroad how, how do how do you decide where the generalization is in the in these techniques and where you go deep um that's a very uh, interesting thought this is what i experienced when i when we were helping these use cases so let's say there is a use case that comes to you and say you know what you you claim to be a data center yeah but no help us with the uh, this automation of with this use case right let's say we are training for uh, face yeah. recognition so we we should help with algorithms to prepare data but not end up doing face recognition for the team so where do you stop where do you put this line and uh, what is the pattern so so for example uh, you should also not end up solving this problem for that specific use case but to 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 see there is a template there's a pattern hidden between that can be used uh, for multiple and, and and that's not a silver bullet that i cannot take the same pattern and use but can i at least create a category uh of of use cases to which i i can use this pattern right uh, so that's that's been our learning yeah yeah i mean this is uh, something we have uh, been doing at snorkel as well in the sense that uh we have a wide range of use cases and they all have their specific needs and we are trying to templateize the ones we learn um about and yeah it's a process <laughs> uh, let, let's put it that way yeah so yeah maybe the next thing i was very interested in is like uh, this iterative uh workflow that that you are uh, now strongly alluding to saying that hey gone are the days when you basically say okay here is my training data i built a model and i'm done so yes. you have to again go back uh take the new data make it uh, get it from raw data to actually actionable data and then build a model and iterate on this process so do you see teams being bottlenecked by this and to what degree are they bottlenecked by this oh it it i'm i'm telling this is happening and it's going to happen to quite a lot of industry right now there is let's say uh, somebody is going to question Let, okay let's let's focus on two items here one is yeah i have data i trained uh, my model i put them in production yeah uh, hands uh, i'm done no you're not you just started right you just put a model in production which needs to be updated because uh, the, the data pattern changes and it has to adapt and otherwise your your model might not be the good one it has to adapt itself so where is that active learning loop so that is a complexity second is if somebody questions like you know we we have a lot of restrictions to the gdpr that uh, and other restrictions like let's say if your model is biased and somebody says okay can you can you at least explain what why is your model behaving the way it is do you have a lineage all the way to the to the train training data and all the way to the uh, raw data and how was that collected and that is very important now because we have to explain not just how what is this black box of model doing but also how was this black box created with with the kind of data that we got was the data biased can can i go back and fix those right uh, so i mean uh, it's it's 
it's definitely a lot of in in between these two you can fit a lot of other problems as well yeah yeah definitely so i think one of the things that uh, that surprises me is when people there, there is a zero one problem which says okay i got my first model but people don't realize that you're signing up for <laughs> a lot of pain <laughs> from there <laughs> because you have to keep maintaining these models and good that it is it is showing up and it is becoming a pain point it's, and it's like I subscription think. to which you cannot stop right yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah there is a uh, audience question so given that you have so many use cases how do you quantify your prioritization of these use cases and do you have to assign dollar values uh, to impact and yeah so how do you quantify it is it dollar values business use cases i'm telling you this is a great question who was this uh, yeah. so this is also a problem like you know there's so many people now that say you know here is our use cases so how do you solve and we are starting off we are just saying uh, we are start, uh, starting off at some point so uh, how do you how do you eat an elephant so answer is uh, stock uh, in, in terms of ml uh, stochastic gradient descent you start somewhere find the local optimum uh, uh, so so for this like what, what we did is you you basically do an inception design workshop bring in people at least so you cannot bring in from different use cases or different organization at least within one organization if there are like a couple of use cases bring them together do a design workshop so uh, i would say design is very important and design uh, inception workshop is also very uh, helpful for us so what we did is identified they they explained their problems ultimately we could figure out uh, so there there is overlap there was a pattern and we drew this uh, uh, value versus complexity chart uh, so let's say there is uh, on on the x axis you have uh, a complexity on the y axis you have the uh, cost right how much how much um, yeah the complexity and the cost so then you have to find that niche space where you know you're you're bringing the highest value with lowest uh, lowest complexity you are you're solving the highest business value with lowest complexity and that's that's the place to start with and then you slowly you know what are the nearest uh, uh, k neighbors to them and then keep solving the other use cases yeah that seems like a, a super reasonable uh, approach to go about it so how so in the sense that uh, how does the design workshop even look like so what are you looking for so people will come with like usually when we talk to people uh, from our respect as well they'll have different requirements and they they have an understanding of the problem so how much of it is the conversation between you uh, folks deciding what so is is it a question of like they have a, uh, the your customers have like a strong uh, understanding of what they want or is it a lot of back and forth is maybe my question so so that's where like i i would say i'm not definitely a better at uh, design uh, inception workshop we have exclusive people who are uh, trained in this area and we brought them on on our uh, platform what do they do is they and they have no clue what's happening in this area and their work is to extract this information identify the problem and convert that into you know in this design, uh, design uh, session what happens is they are converting into features probably if 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 we spend more time convert into user stories also so it, it's good it's amazing to watch in those design sessions that uh, this problems are the area and they they convert into epic sub epics or features and and user stories right and to get there uh, the they get all the uh, all the question from from the customers we so we we put customers in front we ask them all this question sometimes they don't know what they want but they understand the problem all we want is talk talk to them understand this problem do this design sessions and then slowly help them to to uh, to get to that okay this is exactly what you are looking we don't solution in those in those uh sessions we just understand the problem what we do is we collect all those information then we do brainstorm and then see okay what what goes up it's it's very wrong if we start solutioning in those uh, sessions but just understand the pain points yeah yeah so that definitely uh, makes a lot of sense so one thing uh, i wanted to touch upon was like uh, so in the sense that you had these lot of extractors which basically go from like raw data to uh, 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 training data and so there are a lot of approaches to this and uh, we uh, so where do you use these feel like tools like snorkel and uh, I mean, and other things where you sort of get from raw data to label data uh, fitting in, in in the broader platform so okay um so let's let's say both are data centric ai platforms yeah. right okay so it's a huge space 
excuse me it's a it's a, it's a uh, and everybody can coexist and still there are so many opportunities that or so many problems that nobody would have solved right it depends on what are the use cases or what are the use cases did metapex initially started uh, and how did it create those products to cater them so it, there's definitely a bias on on what are the use cases that we understood and what are we building to and when you go to snorkel also and then try to see what are the use cases this snorkel try to understand before they put forward this platform and slowly if you see there is no silver bullet you're slowly creating a uh, it's an iteration it's a loop you're creating products then you see okay you face a use case which for which this doesn't work and then you go back and come up with a better iteration but you also have this knowledge it's like transfer learning and better iterations right so this loop goes on it's not a circle but it's a spiral you keep rising by solving a different use cases it's it's amount of experience and and collaboration right so what 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 we do we are doing is no one model is able to learn sooner hence transfer learning what we do is we build model and we we bring in data from somewhere somewhere else and train the models similarly in this collaboration is what did snorkel learn and what are they sharing to their papers and what are what is sport probably doing how are we sharing and combining this there's a new platform which probably when when they start working on data centric in 2023 or 24 they don't have to go through these problems or challenges right yeah. and how do we learn from them so yeah yeah, yeah. so that's a uh, that's an awesome way of putting it so yeah i mean one of the things that uh, we see uh, happening a lot is like uh, at least in the computer vision side as like the kind of techniques that you require especially uh, when it comes to like programmatic labeling uh, in this aspect is revolves around like um, these large models these days so from your customers what are are you, are you seeing that as being the case uh, like how 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 integrated are models into this the extraction process do you see that happening a lot or is it is it still that the extraction process from raw, raw to label data is still mostly human driven or to ex- to what extent is it model driven so so with extraction what i um, so far understood is there are different layers in extractions also like uh, there are st- still uh, we are extracting some static data at times which which probably makes sense for some some data there is also a uh, rule based extraction Uh, right so what is rule based okay if it meets this this is what if it meets so let's say this is a time and date and uh, if any picture is taken between uh, you know morning 9 and uh, evening 6 so we we call it day time as a picture let's let's categorize it it's a rule based so how do and there's another layer where you can introduce ai right so like how 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 do you teach an ai mm-hmm. to to learn this and, and then extract what we want and to get there you have to solve the above problem because Uh, to, to even identify the data sets you have to first use the rule based and and before the probably matter data and there's different so this is just one one layer of the complexity and then you dive into all these use cases to which you can apply this to yeah. and uh, and you you see a plethora of algorithms just for the extraction out there and that might work and that might not work pick up anything that end up being a service and how easy it is to convert this into an api and put it on a platform so that all of this is encapsulated for those use case teams right and what makes sense to, you know it's like also a combination it's like you are building a block of legos ultimately you're putting in front of and there's also should be a team which at least should build some example and show show this to our use case team which can then take be creative with these comfor- comfortable blocks i say yeah so you're saying there's like multiple levels and sources of supervision and yeah. there are ways of and we need to we need methods to kind of like uh put them together and uh, actually <laughs> actually get some sig- signal out of it so that 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 sounds like something we do but uh so yeah so there's another interesting question uh here uh from the audience so what is the target level for the platform uh this is from uh shelby gas uh is the platform targeted for ai ml engineers or the or subject matter experts uh was what is the if there is any intentionality what was the intentional this- design Yeah. this is another category of uh, what we what we call as personas so when you are creating a product when you are designing a product in those design sessions we also create personas like is this for a uh, subject matter expert is it for advanced expert is is, it, is this for uh, you know uh, an aml engineer who just starting like a newbie 
so we create multiple personas and also we 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 give them names and we understand okay this person has worked in adas understand visual perception data uh, has been worked on this area hence probably this this product might looks you know suits good for you so what are the problems are they facing what are the challenges are they facing so we have to now uh, wear customer shoes right we have to know where it hurts when you wearing those shoes so and only then be able to design those products so we there is definitely no silver bullet there's no one product which is going to cater all this but again going back to the chart which of those problem who do you think has the highest value if if we start you know addressing those use cases should we address uh, ai ml engineers or the experts or, or should i go all the way to the uh, uh, people who have no idea uh, how to work in ai so based on that based on the organization needs i think we have to pick the persona and the use case and start from there and slowly evolve so at ford i assume it will be mostly ai ml engineers at this point or you, you should tell me otherwise I, i would assume that at ford it would be ai ml engineers uh, we, we, is, we, it's better to start from there right so I, now you you i would say i would probably start from there because you you from them you will know what's the problem because they would have it's not we as anybody or data centric ai is now starting all of us are no they, these platforms existed these teams existed their research team existed uh, probably it's just we are we are putting a name and grouping things together now they they already existed but they were all working in silos so now we are calling each other helping each other and i'm trying to understand and and we are we are trying to understand the problem encapsulating most of it into services yeah so that's uh, that's very interesting in the sense that uh, overall these whole ideas of like uh, data centric ai and this iteration as being the first class thing and not thinking of model as like a one shot process okay kind of taking over <clears throat> and it's good to hear your perspective on that Uh, i i know this might queue to go but one last thing i'll say <laughs> so, so far there there two kind of uh, use cases one think of um, you have a fridge at home you have ingredients you you go open okay these are my ingredients and okay I, i'm going to then decide what to cook but think otherwise can i order what, my ingredients and that that will be available in like in like couple of minutes and then i can be creating in what i need to cook apply this to uh, data I think that's where we are going towards. That's that's a nice way of putting things. Thanks, Madhu. Amazing. Thank well, you. thank you so much, Ravi and Madhu. That was a very exciting conversation. There are still some questions popping up. What will be the best way to reach the two of you for people to just reach out after the event? I think uh, both of our emails are there. I mean, shooting the questions via email would be the best, I suppose. Yeah. You Perfect. can shoot me a LinkedIn message also or email through Ravi any any time. I'm I'm open. i'm here to learn unlearn and share what i know and also uh, you know uh, whatever it is shoot your questions happy to answer and learn things thank you arti thank you ravi thank you so much yeah. you, madhu and for our audience members if you could take a quick second to tell us how you thought that session went uh, go to the pulse tab you should have gotten a notification as well uh, i'll just pause very quickly to do that and with that We have another exciting session coming up in the data track. Uh, we have Dylan from Landing talking about um, them building their platform, also a data-centric AI platform called Landing Lens, Journey in Democratizing AI. Um, again, as a reminder, uh, we have two other tracks going on, techniques and applications. If you wanted to check out those sessions, you could go to the agenda tab and then navigate. Otherwise, if you just stay, you should be automatically re redirected to the next one. So I will see you at the next session.